Today's video is going to be about the Commodore Super Pet. Mostly. The VIC-20 is going to be part of it, but the VIC-20 just has a little supporting role in this one. I recently did a Super Pet video where I did every program language that it supports. Go check that one out if you're bored. I did a little history of the Super Pet in that video, so we're not going to touch on the history of the Super Pet here. There is going to be a lot of history in this video, though. The history of... OS 9 running on the Super Pet. That's what we want to look at today. We want to look at an 8-bit computer from the early 1980s running a true multitasking operating system. So, sit back, relax, let's have some fun! I mentioned we'd be running OS 9 on the Commodore Super Pet. So what is OS 9? OS 9 is, and notice I said is and not was, OS 9 is a Unix-like, multitasking operating system that was developed in a joint venture between Microware and Motorola. It was originally developed to run on the Motorola 6809 CPU. It was eventually ported to the Motorola 68K series, and it still exists today as an embedded systems OS. With OS 9 having been originally developed for the 6809 CPU, and with the Commodore Super Pet having a Motorola 6809 in addition to its MOS 6502, OS 9 was a good fit for the Super Pet, but it didn't just run natively. In 1985, Avigdor Muis and other members of TPUG, the Toronto Pet Users Group, worked to create a hardware memory management unit board for the Super Pet and ported OS 9 to the Super Pet as Super OS 9. The OS 9 port was licensed by Microware. The Super Pet is an 8032 pet, as seen on the bottom of this diagram, with the added bits you see at the top being what makes it a Super Pet. There's a 6809 CPU, ROM specific to the Super Pet, and an additional 64K of RAM mapped in at hex 9000, bringing the total RAM in the machine to 96K. The additional 64K isn't one contiguous block though, rather it's split into 16 separate 4K banks that can be mapped in individually. The TPUG MMU allowed OS 9 to see this 64K RAM as one contiguous block from 0000 to FFFF. Now we know the story of how OS 9 came to run on the Super Pet as Super OS 9. The Toronto Pet Users Group ported it and they made a hardware MMU board to allow it to run. But that's not the end of the story, otherwise we wouldn't be here. You can run OS 9 on a Super Pet today thanks to some really cool people who got together and did a whole bunch of work to make it happen. Let's talk about that next. Let's take a step back to the 1980s when a fella named Golan Klinger began attending T-Pug meetings with his dad who had purchased a pet in the 1970s. That little fella in this picture is Golan, by the way. Golan got an early start at T-Pug and remained active, eventually becoming the president of the club. In the summer of 2008, Golan was going through some of the Super Pets in his collection and found that two of them contained T-Pug MMU boards and he also had the original OS 9 software discs. Golan sent an MMU board to Jim Brain of Retro Innovations and Jim reverse engineered the MMU board. As a side note, both Jim and Golan went out of their way to dig up information for me to create this video. Jim's records indicate that Golan asked him to reverse engineer the MMU board on September 15, 2008, and Jim's Eagle PCB design files are dated September 15, 2008. That's right, it took Jim one day to reverse engineer the MMU. That's why Jim designs electronic devices, and I make videos about people who design electronic devices. Unknown to Jim Brain, a fella named Mike Nabarezny was also working to reverse engineer the MMU board. It was Mike who reached out to Radisys, the company who bought Microware, and received formal permission to distribute OS 9 on a non-commercial basis. Jim Brain makes his MMU clone available for sale as a kit on his Go4 Retro website. I purchased one of Jim's boards and that's what will allow me to show you OS 9 running on my Super Pet in this video. Now that my explanation's out of the way, let's get started with the demo. Early Super Pets had three boards in them, while later Super Pets had only two. My Super Pet is a three board version. The top board is the RAM expansion, the middle board is the CPU board, and the bottom board is the main board, just like you'd see in an 8032 Commodore Pet. The MMU board installs on the CPU board in the middle there, so I'll need to pull off the RAM expansion board to get to that.
The CPU board is out. To install the MMU board, I'll need to remove the 6809 CPU and one of the 74LS273 logic chips. But first, I need to build the MMU board I purchased from go4retro.com. Remember, these are sold as a kit. In the interest of time, I'll give you an abbreviated version of the MMU build. The board's installed. Now, if we want to run Super OS 9, we need Super OS 9 software. Let's go grab that now. OS 9 is heavily reliant on relative files. At the time of this video, none of the available modern storage solutions like PetSD Plus have relative file support sufficient to run OS 9. It has to run from a real Commodore disk drive. I'll be using a Zoom floppy device, also purchased from Go4Retro, connected on one end via USB to an Ubuntu Linux machine running OpenCBM software, and connected via IEEE 488 on the other end to a Commodore 8050 floppy drive. I'll start by using OpenCBM to send a format command to the 8050 drive. All OpenCBM has to do here is send the command using IEC protocol. It doesn't have to know how to format a disk. The disk operating system running out of ROM in the 8050 accepts the command and does all the work. Now that the disk has been formatted, I can copy the downloaded D82 image to the physical disk. And yeah, you have to provide OpenCBM with the target device name here. It's great software, but it can't read your mind. I want to demonstrate logging onto the SuperPet from a remote serial terminal, so I'll connect a serial cable before I move on. The SuperPet has a notch in the case over here, which allows you to route the serial cable out of the case. As I said, I'm going to demo using a remote serial console with the SuperPet. You can use any serial terminal you like. If you happen to have an old VT100 laying around, go for it. I'm going to be using a Commodore VIC-20 connected via a VIC-1011A running VIC-Term terminal emulation software. Not because it's the best choice, but because it's easy enough to set up and it's here. I also find the 22 column mode on the VIC-20 to be utterly charming, albeit wildly impractical to use as a terminal.
F4 will bring up the settings menu in Victorm. The only thing I need to change here is the baud rate. The Super Pet is set to 1200, so the Vic 20 needs to match. Now I'll load OS9 from the Super Pet. I usually edit load times out in my videos, but I'm going to leave everything in this demo in real time so you get to experience OS9 like it's 1985. I'll launch a TSMON process. I assume TSMON means time-sharing monitor, but that's just a guess. I'll tell it to attach to device T1, which is the Super Pet serial port. The ampersand, like in Unix, puts TSMON in the background so I can continue working in this shell. I pressed enter on my remote terminal on the VIC-20. TSMON running on the SuperPet now has to spawn a login process for me, which requires it to load the login executable from floppy disk. Neat, I'm logged in. I'll do a process listing just for fun. Back to the Super Pet and I'll show the running processes again. The design is very Unix-like. You can see that every process is running as the root user with UID 0. Process ID 1, Cisco, is the equivalent to init on Unix. Process ID 2 is the shell I'm running on the console. Process 3 is the TSMON process I executed. And process 4 is the login shell running from the VIC-20. That's it for this video. You now know how OS9 ended up being ported to the Commodore Super Pet in 1985. You know how the T-Pug MMU board and software were reverse engineered and preserved in 2008. You got to watch me install a replica MMU board and boot OS9 on my Super Pet in 2022. I want to take a moment to thank Golan Klinger and Jim Brain for going above and beyond to provide me with information to make this video. You fellas were a tremendous help to me. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something. I'll see you next time.